Hey guys, hey everybody. Um, this is a, you know, a lot of times I plan my builds out and what I'm gonna do, but this is a spur of the moment. This just popped up. Um, I, I joined a Facebook group for building and some various stuff. I like to keep up with what other people are doing and, you know, learn some new techniques. And in this group, uh, it just so happens that they are doing a group build and with a little competition edge to it. Kind of kind of like how I did for the, uh, the MiG F-14 mashup. Um, except this group build is all about F-16s, about Vipers. Um, and you know what? I will explain, for those who don't know, one day, why we call F-16s Vipers. Because on, on a lot of posts, people are like, Viper? I thought it was the Fighting Falcon. But anyway, so it is the group build is any F-16 you want to build in any scale. And I, of course, thought long and hard about what could I do that's a little bit different. And uh, what can I get my hands on right away? And of course, F-16 models, there's so many out there. Um, but I had a great time building uh, Skunk Models F-16 XL uh, a couple years ago. And I figured what a you know great platform to do for this group build. Um, someone else is doing an F-16 XL, but they're doing it in 172 scale. And I think they're using an old monogram kit. Um, so, you know, when, when you do these group builds, it's cool to win. It is nice to win, but it's it's just also really cool to participate with a bunch of people building kind of the same thing. Even though we're all building different F-16s, you know, it's everybody's kind of engaged in the same project from far away. And at the end, you can see what everybody came up with. So this is what I came up with for the idea. I have a printed piece of paper here because the decals have not arrived yet. Here's the fun part. I have to have this done by October 2nd, and it is uh, September 12th right now. Uh, I don't know when you're going to see this video because I've got other stuff going going on that I have to get done, but I'm going to do a video of the whole process. So there are so many cool new decal sets out with uh, Viper uh, aggressor schemes going on that I figured it would be awesome to see. And uh, another what if, because you know I can't resist them, what if the F-16 XL was was really put into production? What if it was serving, you know, throughout its role? And uh, what if they took the XL and they turned it into an awesome aggressor to help train our pilots in red flag and weapon school and things like that? So uh, these are not all the schemes that are available from Bullseye. I got two different Bullseye decal sh sets just so that I could have full options, but... These are some of the ones I'm really thinking about. I love the Splinter BDU, but that's only in Alaska. That's uh, They serve with the 18th aggressors for Red Flag Alaska. Um, I'm probably going to do a Nellis-related scheme. Um, but we'll... Anyway, so I'm waiting on the decals. Okay. What I want to do right now is I'm going to unbox this kit, because I built this once, and now I have some really good insight on some of the, the pitfalls and some of the really cool features of this kit. I haven't seen a lot of unboxings of this kit out there, but I've seen some, so I figured I'd just throw mine in the mix. So let's take a look at the Skunk Model Works F-16 XL. Now this is the single seat. They also have a, a, a dual seat, a tandem seat F-16 XL2, because in real life, they actually did build performance demonstrators, a single seat and a two seat model. So you get options. Now what you'll find as you go through these parts is that a lot of this kit is actually sprue for sprue uh, right from the Kinetic F-16 set. And then they um, just made the parts like, for example, this entire lower fuselage wing half. This is specific to the F-16 XL. So as we go through here, you're gonna see a lot of parts that you're gonna recognize if you're you know, into building F-16s and straight out of the Kinetic lineup. So before we do any of the parts, I want to try to get to the bottom. And there we go. Take a look at some of the decals and markings. Now for decals, you get a lot of nice stenciling for the fuel tanks and the weapons. Um, and this is pretty cool that it comes with this because you know a lot of kits don't give you this stuff at all. So when you start to look at the decals, first looking at these uh, stenciling for the weapons, you get some really nice options. Now you don't get the choice between um, practice and live rounds, but what you get is pretty good because a lot of companies don't give you this at all. When you look at all the decals though, so you get stenciling for the plane and you get it in you know um, high visibility and low visibility. You get a lot of different options for markings for the actual F-16 XL flying in NASA markings. 
You also get some really cool fictional markings. Uh, for a little while, for about three years, the Flying Tigers, uh, they flew F-16s. Uh, they actually flew F-16 uh, Block 40s. So you have markings to build one of those. You have one for Nellis at the Weapons School. Um, you have, uh, this is the actual F-16XL marking. Now, you even have some Israeli markings because to make an Israeli version because, you know, the Israelis are huge F-16 users. And what's really cool here is that they actually have the unit patch right there uh, in decal form for the 16th weapon squadron which is the squadron at weapon school where f-16 pilots go to become the masters of their craft you know so it's pretty i mean a lot of a lot of cool decals and then there's some more weapons uh, markings and everything like that so you get full stenciling great markings the decals are really good quality i mean really nice quality you know, everything is really well in register and um, nice, bright, vivid colors, and uh, even if you don't use them for the kit, they're totally worth saving in a spares box for other stuff you might want to work on later. <clears throat> the instruction manual has just a little bit about the F-16 XL. Over here, you get a full parts diagram. Again, you'll, you'll recognize these sprues look straight out of the kinetic kit because they are. You get your paint index with multiple uh, paint producers so that you can... Um, you know, with that. There are some really good illustrations here of how all the assembly goes. For the most part, they're very good. There are a couple places here and there where it gets just a little bit wonky as you're trying to sort stuff out. For the vast majority, 90, 98% of the pictures are very clear. Shows you exactly where everything needs to go. Something to keep in mind, and we'll talk about this as we go through the build, There, there's a lot more weight. The F-16 XL is longer than their standard F-16 and a whole lot more weight rear of the landing gears. You definitely need nose weight unless you want a tail sitter for this guy. But like I said, as you can see, the instructions are very clear. There's like here, it just says add weight. Doesn't tell you how much. You just got to figure it out. Uh, as you're building this, remember the F-16 XL at that time, it was built off of the F-16A. So a lot of the features uh, are F-16A related, um, like the shorter base of the tail. Um, that is an F-16A type thing. Um, I'm not talking about with the parachute housing. I'm just talking about if you got rid of it like that. The F-16C and the more modern variants have a, have a, a longer base for the tail. And they have a second... Uh, UHF antenna on there. Just little things here and there to keep in mind. You get adjustable leading edge slats and flaps, which is really cool all along the aircraft so you can position it in all kinds of cool ways you want. The air brakes, uh, you'd have to do some surgery to position them open, but we'll, you know, that's something you can choose to do. Um, very clear instructions for your weapons as well and boy does this thing hold a lot of weapons that was one of the main points of the f-16 xl so as you look through here um you just get we'll look through the kit you get targeting pods uh you get actual lantern pods old school lantern pods because that's what was available when this thing was flying so the aaq 13 and 14 but you've got very nicely done versions of those uh, we'll take a look at all the weapons that you've got Here's your weapon painting and marking guide. Unfortunately, all the painting guides are in black and white. Uh, you've got your loadout guide. Those are all the different hard points you have to mess with. You can get really creative uh, when you load up an F-16 XL um, just based on, you know, various things. For the most part, like a lot of the missions, they flew with just a single 500-pound bomb on each one of these. But you can, you can uh, realistically suspend... 2,000 pounds from a lot of them just as long as you're clearing the flaps and everything and um, It was tested with a whole lot of weapons. So go nuts the one that I did on it I overloaded it with so much stuff just to make it look really good, but um, it also has um, ECM pods in here and Fuel tanks and you know just everything that you would you would need To load up a Viper for combat or a really good air show your painting guides for the aircraft themselves, unfortunately, are all black and white. Um, they are very clear, though, in the, in the delineation here. Um, well, that's that could be more clear. But this is the red, white, and blue over standard uh, Egypt gray scheme of the actual F-16 XL demonstrator for the Air Force. So this is kind of, this is as it flew in real life. 
There is the F-16 that went on to fly with NASA. Um, now, the NASA bird never carried weapons because it was used for, um, you know, aerodynamic research and, and technology performance. And they actually changed the shape of one of the wings just on one side once upon a time. There's some cool stuff you could do if you want to do that. In the mythic markings, you have the Flying Tigers, Shark Mouth. Again, F-16s really did fly in the 1990s. I believe it was from 93 to 96. The Flying Tigers actually flew Block 40 F-16s for just a little bit, and then they realized, nah, they're going to give the, F the A-10s back. But um, you've got a, a cool marking set for that with some really great decals. And even if you don't want to do this, those decals make a beautiful F-16, you know, just an F-16C model all on its own. Then you've got the weapon school. Uh, now this is a, an experimental camouflage scheme. Once upon a time, the, both the Navy and the Air Force experimented with what they call the heater ferris schemes. And they're varying shades of gray, just kind of geometrically placed across aircraft. They did it on, on a few different uh, airframes just to see how it would how it would look and affect you know visual identification and visual tracking so there has never been a weapon school f-16 painted in this paint scheme uh, if you were going to do weapon school realistically it would just be the standard um, u.s air force f-16 gray the hill gray um, scheme uh, but this is definitely a cool different look to do and then has the false cockpit uh, underneath and then you've got your Israeli markings. So you can, um, you know, build yourself an Israeli, I don't know what this would be, a super nets? <laughs> I don't know because it's, you know, it's an A model again, but, um, you know, it, it would be a very interesting thing. I, if this was actually put into production, you know the Israelis would go with it because they love M16s. So, very good instructions, beautiful decals, uh, lots of marking options, and lots of spares for future projects later. So now let's look at some actual pieces, and we'll just start as they come out of the box. This is the lower fuselage and some flaps. You can see, I mean, excellent, excellent, uh, finely done recessed panel lines, uh, lots of rivet detail. Um, there is some flash, unfortunately, around the edges that needs to be cut off on this kit. I don't know what was up with that, but the kinetic kit kind of had the same kind of thing. Now, you can see there's detailing on the insides of the air brakes. So if you wanted to do the surgery, cut them open, and display them, you've got all the inside framing and everything. It'll look pretty good. Um, you just got to be motiv motivated to do that. But, I, you know, I don't have a standard F-16 next to me to show you the difference in length, but it is a little bit, it is a little bit longer than a standard F-16 and it's got more of a curvy rear end um, to facilitate actually taking off and landing so the pilots don't scrape the tail there. But that's all part of the design, you know, of this airplane. There's your upper fuselage. There now what's great about this is that one of the one of the biggest pain about building an F-16 kit is always getting that fuselage to wing joint nice and even, this eliminates that completely. You just put the two halves on top. There are some slight fit issues. You're gonna deal with some sanding and filling, unless they've like revamped the kits a little bit since I last built it. Uh, you're gonna deal with some sanding and filling around the sides, and there might be some issues uh, to the rear. And again, the panel lines are very finely done, so you don't wanna overload this kit with paint and then um, top coats and everything, you know, to make sure you can get all the really nice rich detail here shown in your weathering. But it comes out really, really nicely. Um, the nose cone is, they, there's an aftermarket nose cone for this. It's just a hair off in terms of what the real F-16 XL had, because again, remember where they changed proportions a little bit. But on this also, um, you know, you don't have any ejector pin marks or anything where they're gonna show, and just a, the tiniest little bit of flash to cut off. I think we'll save all the armament stuff for later. Um, your clear parts, this is a single seat version. They do make a, a two seat version if that's what you want to build. You do have a little bit of seam down the middle, kind of Hasegawa like. Uh, that is cleaned up very easily. Uh, how did I do it? I can't remember, but you know, there's a million videos online. It's, it's just, it's, it's some very fine sanding followed by polishing. 
and uh, dips in future, and you'll get that right out. Uh, that seam will disappear. Unfortunately, you only have to worry about it on the forward piece because the rear piece is nice. But you've got molded in detail for the canopy frames that are really, really nicely done as well. Uh, you've got just enough of a, uh, a tangible edge there so that your masking is going to be a piece of cake. And then we've got various other clear parts for targeting pod lenses and missiles and anti-collision lights, navigation lights, heads-up displays, all that other stuff. It's, it's pretty distortion-free. There's a little bit to it, but enough that in scale it's going to look fine Want to see everything in there. By the way, these are all resealable bags, so if you're working on it and you want to put it away and come back to it later, you can protect all your parts nicely. I never do that, honestly. I throw them in the box, but... This part should look very familiar to people that have built a Kinetic F-16. Okay, you've got your intake, you've got your um, Pratt & Whitney engine nozzle, again a little bit of flash. Um, inner intake goes together pretty well, there's not a whole lot of uh, filling and sanding you need to do it, it's got it's a pretty good fit. These are some chin intakes for your targeting and navigation pods for lantern. I on mine also threw a Hasegawa ASQ-213 uh, harm targeting system pod on there and it went pretty well. Um, these are landmarks for mounting these so you can cut these off if you don't need them but again detail follows through like all the other pieces. You can also mount if you get if you want to do a, um, a general electric engine you can mount just about anybody's uh, general electric exhaust on here if you like that shape better or you want to model one of those specific jets and it, it fits pretty well. More clear parts for weapons and targeting pod and stuff. We've got some uh, landing gear, some forward landing gear lights for the newer models. Uh, we've got the wingtip lights that go by your sidewinder launchers, more weapons lenses, wide angle heads up display if you wanna do a block 40 type, um, you know, F-16 a uh, normal aperture uh, heads-up display and you know just like I said more clear parts and lenses lots of them this part again should look just perfectly familiar to anybody that's built a kinetic f-16 a c model anyway these are the exact sprues that you get with weapons with stabilators fuel tanks, uh, you know, pylons, it's, it's the exact same pieces that you get in most kinetic kits. Pretty good uh, ACES 2 ejection seat, wouldn't hurt to replace it with resin if you were really doing like a contest worthy build, but uh, two of these, so you have the pieces you need to finish it off. Now, this is a great time to mention like if you are into what if projects and everything, so you're not gonna use these obviously, so now you have cool extra pieces to uh, trick out whatever it is that you want to do, any other kind of you know stuff. I always save my extra pieces, not everybody does. Another sprue straight out of the Kinetic uh, F-16 kit. So, these are leading edge slats that won't be used in this build, um, but we've got vertical stabilizer. Uh, these are flaps for the standard wing that we won't be using, the flapperons, um, more intake parts, you know, just uh, landing gear bay slash intake cockpit pieces. Um, there are, you know, you can fit any number of aftermarket cockpit modifications into this, depending on what model you're trying to build. There's a lot of stuff out there and available. They even have, if you want to build it based on a uh, Block 15, they have the searchlight housing um, section there for you, which is really cool. So, and again, the detail, you know, you can see the detail just sort of is is everywhere that it should be. A little, li little light and shallow in the tail. You're going to have some problems with paint and, and stuff build up on the tail for all these little rivet marks. If you're going for every single one of them, you want to keep it light there. But on that, very, very nicely done. So these are just some extra parts, uh, including a more C model friendly uh, cockpit tub. We've got the bulged doors for the the later model uh, landing gear. You know, with the bigger 
wheels for supporting more weight. Um, these are all of your little uh, hard point pylons for under the wings. Um, your later model uh, Ford door, you've got two different options for uh, your gun port, one that's fared over, one that's not. The NASA one has a fared over gun port, so they're never gonna shoot lots of different antennas and such. And here are your leading edge slats for your F-16 XL type. So I'll say it again, lots of spare parts in this kit, you know, if you're not using them all to do lots of other different projects. Now I have ordered and I recommend highly with this kit because of the weight involved and the extra nose weight and all that other stuff, I, I ordered a white metal landing gear for it. These get a little bit wobbly when you have the full weight of the model sitting on it. So, uh, you know, it's I just, from experience, that's why I got these. Um, here you have some standard landing gear pieces. Uh, this is awesome. This particular tail fillet here, this, this is for the Block 15. But this is kind of hard to find outside of a block, an actual specific Block 15 kit. There are a lot of different builds that you can do uh, for NATO and some specific Air Force versions with this Block 15 uh, base on the tail. These are actual relocated actuators and servos because the Block 15 included a second radio that needed to move stuff. So you've got your, uh, your bird slicers and stuff like that. You've also got the tail base if you want to not put a drag chute on the tail like the actual uh, XL has and you want to put a standard US Air Force type um, tail you can use these pieces so once again lots of options if you want to you if you want to build a C type tail though with that extra uh, UHF aerial you're gonna have to scavenge it from from something else because that it's actually one of the parts that is not in this kit unfortunately Here's your lantern, uh, very basic um, navigation and targeting pod pieces. Uh, the detail on these could be improved a little bit. It would be great if they molded this with, um, you know, some glass, uh, some clear parts so you could actually make out the lenses and everything. But for what they are, not bad. And you can replace these if you don't like them with lots of different weapon sets uh, from a few different manufacturers. Yet another sprue that should be very familiar to folks that have built kinetic uh, F-16 kits. This is most of your air-to-air ordnance with some of your air-to-ground stuff. So you've got some older AIM-9Ms and some newer AIM-9Xs. There's some detail on the Ms that you don't see in other places. Like uh, just if you take a look at it, it's pretty good. Uh, some GBU-38s and GBU-12s. And what's really cool is depending on what time period you're modeling this, they've got the early large fin AIM-120As, and then they've got the clipped fins AIM-120 Bravos. These could also work as AIM-120Cs. Um, and in a pinch, you could probably make it an AIM-120D also, because you know there's not much external difference. But the huge difference between the early uh, AIM-120As with their large fins versus the clipped fin versions, and the reason is uh, F-22 putting these things inside a, a re, an internal weapons bay required changing the fins around. And with that came, you know, some internal reworkage too. Uh, AIM-120As are not really in service right now, but if, if we needed to um, remotor them and put some modernized electronics, we could. They just could not fit inside the weapons bays of our 5th gen stuff. We could shoot them all day long off of F-16s, F-15s, F-18s. Uh, but it's cool that you have the choice of both. And you know, in a pinch, if you're if you're pretty careful, you can you can clip the edges of these fins because of the way that these have a 90 degree leading edge, and these just kind of come all the way down to the missile body. There's going to be that little bit of people can tell, but you can get away with it. You know, in anything besides the strictest contest build. And then finally, you're going to get a whole lot of Mark 82 Snake Eyes. So the Mark 82 Snake Eye is a standard Mark 82 500 pound dumb bomb, free fall bomb, low drag bomb. It's got a couple different names. But it has the Snake Eyes air retardation fins put on there. And that's not 
that's a real name. Uh, sorry if that offends somebody or everybody's like, what? What these things do, you can see them used very effectively in Vietnam. We use them a lot. As these things drop, um, so there's a series of four fins that open up cruciform style. And they open and they slow the descent of the bomb so a plane can get much lower. Because there have been planes that have actually uh, damaged themselves with the blast of their own bombs. You know, trying to do low altitude bombing. So that's what the Snake Eye was developed for. Um, so you'll see these used extensively in Vietnam so they could get low and close to the ground. You know, when you're fighting in, in jungle and stuff. Um, so you can mount one of these on each of the hard points or they give you the multiple ejector racks. These will hold six bombs each. Um, and they're, they're not really used anymore because we have them in the inventory, but you know what? We've really gone to an almost all smart weapon inventory. Uh, we, don't need to, we don't need to dump six bombs to blow up a truck anymore. You know, we have the technology, one bomb, one truck, and now we can do it with 250 pounds versus 500 pounds with an SB, with an SDB. Um, things like that, but these just look cool. And so again, if you're not going to use them, great stuff to save for a further build. They look great on like an F4, on F100 and F105 for a Vietnam style build. And you get two sprues of those. So you get a ton of stuff in this box. Um, by the way, the white metal uh, landing you get here, they it comes with uh, both the early gear and the heavier later main landing gear so you can use either one so like i said you get a ton of stuff in this box and you know it's not a cheap kit but number one it's probably the best kit of of its type out there of the f-16 xl it's kind of the only one that you're going to find now there used to be a i can't remember who did it but a resin conversion i had it it was terrible i ended up never even building it it was so bad getting the, the wings to fit on and all that stuff and the, the fuselage extension. It's got a lot of detail. It's a nice kit to build. It's fairly forgiving. You do need to have some skill to put it together, especially with sanding and filling on some of those parts. But in the world of what if, you could do so much with an F-16 XL. And, you know, here's, here's some pictures of the one that I, they're not great pictures, but here's some pictures of the one that I finished uh, a couple years ago. And, and that was just with a little bit of modification work. And that wasn't even for like a contest or anything. That was just one I built to display at work as like a, hey, here it is. So lots of cool, I mean, lots of cool options with this with this model kit. I can't wait to get this thing done. Highly recommend it uh, if you have the money to spend. It, you know, model kits are expensive all over the place these days, I guess. But uh, if, you're, uh, if you are, especially if you're a what if builder um, or you like to customize your stuff, uh, not only do you get the kit to build, but I mean, it's so worth it to have all these spare parts and all these options available too. So that is the unboxing of this kit. And uh, stick around because soon you'll see the complete buildup of how we're going to do this thing and set it up for this group build competition. So as always, I, I welcome your comments on the video on the kit. For those of you that have built this before, you know, what do you have to say about it? Do uh, you agree with my assessment? you not agree? Is there anything that I have forgotten to mention regarding uh, the buildup and the way this thing goes together? Please comment and, and uh, fill in the gaps that I might have left. But definitely a kit worth, worth putting together. Awesome addition to anybody's shelf collection. Thanks for watching, guys, as always. For those of you building along at home, keep building them, build them well. And we'll be back to see what this build looks like really soon.